Welcome to MS Research Australia's Research Report. I'm Dr Hamish Campbell and in this series we explore the research that's going on in Australia and around the world. In this episode we meet Dr Aylan Nguyen from the University of Melbourne. Dr Nguyen is a neurologist who's busy completing her PhD. One of the topics of her doctorate is whether changes in brain volume can be used in the clinic to detect whether treatments are working or not, even in the absence of relapses. Here's what she had to say about it. So my project uh, involves um, looking at brain volume in multiple sclerosis and what I'm hoping to do is to see whether or not we can use brain volume measurements in the clinical setting uh, because currently we can't do that. Uh, what I'll be doing is using a commercially available uh, fully automated MRI software uh, where we'll be sending um, all of our MRI scans to and, uh, and they'll come back with the MRI brain volume change over the previous year. And what I'm hoping to find is whether or not these measurements are accurate enough to be used in the clinical setting. So a MRI uh, stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging, and it's a, it's a type of um, imaging um, that uses magnets rather than ionising radiation, such as a, a CT scan or an X-ray. Uh, what that uh, gives us is uh, essentially great pictures of the brain itself because it can better distinguish between different tissues. Uh, and so, modality of choice for um, uh, multiple sclerosis, because it gives us great looks at um, the lesions of the plaques um, versus normal brain. What we'll be doing is um, we're collecting all of the um, what we call volumetric scans, or 3D scans, uh, of patients um, that have been done in a clinical setting over the last um, two to five years at different hospitals in Australia and worldwide. And so with these scans, uh, we'll send them to the um, um, commercially um, run company called Hypermetrics. And what they'll do is that they'll spit back um, the numbers in terms of the change in the brain volume each year. And um, unfortunately, in a normal person, um, our brain shrinks with age. So that's something that we can't uh, change. But um, we do know that in an MS brain, um, without treatment, unfortunately, um, the brain shrinks two to three times faster. Um, but on treatment, the hope is that the shrinkage of the brain is very close to a normal aging brain. Um, so what we hope uh, to look at is, firstly, to see what the measurements are and to make sure that they're accurate measurements. There's always um, going to be some, some change um, with um, different scans that are being done in the clinical setting and that's the challenge um, of trying to bring it um, into the clinical setting um, to see what the error is on these scans and to make sure that we can still use it in the clinical setting within the errors um, of, the, um, of the, the scan itself. Ideally, the aim would be that um, if we have these results in a clinical setting, we could see whether or not we would expect our particular patient to have that degree of shrinkage. And if it's similar to normal, then we know that they're hopefully doing okay, they don't need to switch treatment. But if the shrinkage of the brain is faster than what we would expect, um, then our aim would be to consider looking at maybe escalating treatment um, to prevent uh, or reduce future disability. So that's the, the long term goal of doing this to bring it into the clinical setting so we can use for our patients. At the moment, um, when we do an MRI um, brain scan for our patients, um, most of what we can look at at the moment are new lesions. Um, and we know that new lesions um, in the long term aren't good uh, if they accumulate for our patients. The problem is that the number of lesions doesn't always equate to a person's disability. Um, so someone could have many more lesions in the brain um, but have a very low um, uh, I guess burden of disease, whereas someone may not have many lesions um, but be more disabled. And so there is that discrepancy between the number of lesions and disability. And we think that the brain volume um, or the shrinkage of brain is a better, is a better marker um, of someone's disability. Um, the problem is that we don't have that measurement when someone comes to see us in clinic, we have the number of lesions. Um, but as I said, it's, it's, it's good, but it's not great. 
Um, and if we could have that extra information, um, in addition to all the other information we have in clinics, such as obviously someone's um, examination or how they're doing, it will really help us um, to treat them um, I guess, uh, better uh, in terms of reducing the disability and targeting what's happening for them, so individualising um, the treatment. That is a brief snapshot on Dr Nguyen's research into using MRIs to detect brain volume changes. As always, go to our website for more information, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future research reports. I'm Dr Hamish Campbell and I'll see you next time.